much for joining us for our virtual recording um, Sunday sketch with artist Mary Jennings. I'm going to go ahead and turn everything over to Mary, and she's going to let us know how we can do some book plates with coffee. <laughs> well, thank you, Valerie. It's always a pleasure um, being a guest of the National Sporting Library and Museum for Sunday Sketch. And on a stunning day like today, I honestly hope that um, you're taking advantage of the good weather and um, we will be recording this and um, sharing it with you. So, um, so welcome to those that are here. And I will introduce myself, Mary Jennings. I'm an artist and um, I grew up in the area and I work at the Salamander Resort and Spa as their artist in residence. And I teach many classes there. And I've been enjoying being part of the Sunday Sketch program since uh, for, I, I think this is my seventh or eighth um, time, it probably grows, but it's been a, a sheer pleasure and delight to bring this program to you. And one thing that we try to do when we bring these programs together for you is we not only teach you how to draw or how to capture using a variety of, of materials, but we also um, really encourage you to come to the museum when it's open and see the exhibits that are on uh, display. Now you have an option these days to see the virtual presentations of them or to actually go in person. There is an exhibit that is open right now of a fantastic painter. Um, his name is Tucker Smith and he is, um, he has really taken, um, his uh, theme of a celebration of nature to its uh, extreme with his beautiful artwork, his beautiful paintings. Um, now today, I'm not actually going to be painting wildlife um, as Tucker does, but I'm going to be sort of um, celebrating um, certainly uh, wildlife and some of the things that he captures so beautifully in his artwork with making book plates. Now, book plates are something that we probably haven't seen very much these days, but they some of them are very beautiful and, and very detailed. Now in the library at the National Sporting uh, Library and Museum, the library has a phenomenal collection, obviously of books, but they also have a collection of specifically book plates. And I went to visit the library uh, by appointment and I um, was able to explore some of the different types of book plates. Now I'm going to take a second and I'm going to um, show you some of those book plates, but to give you a sort of a heads up of where I'm going with all of this, um, we're gonna use some um, materials that we're not typically used to using. And again, I want to, um, the reason why I'm showing you this is one, because it's a unique material, two, because I, I sort of envision Tucker Smith maybe considering using this material while he's on horseback uh, in the great expanse of nature that he um, takes uh, treks out on his horseback um, and enjoys. So we are gonna be doing uh, uh, drawing and painting with coffee. Now, coffee, you, you can understand, is this beautiful, dark, rich, brown color, but we don't use actually brewed coffee. We use, we, me, we, we will be using uh, instant coffee. Instant coffee, um, you know, like the kind that, uh, that you're not probably, you haven't probably enjoyed for quite a while, and that's a good thing. But anyway, instant coffee, when it's hydrated with water, makes a fantastic um, uh, um, material to paint with. It almost looks like walnut ink. So it's very dark in, in, in color. You can use it like you would watercolor with layers and you can do so many wonderful things like that. Now, the other thing I wanted to um, give you a heads up about I'm gonna show you what the coffee looks like, um, but I also want you to start to think about book plates themselves. Book plates are interesting. They um, had a really 
significant place. People's books were very valuable. They wanted to mark them as their own. It was sort of a, um, a way to you know, claim ownership, but they were also very, very personalized. Uh, the collection that I'll show you is beautiful. So, and they sort of celebrated the owner of the book by using images that would convey to whoever opened the book, a story about the owner. Now, here's what I want us to work on today. You know, it's fun just to draw, just to draw for drawing's sake. However, I like to kind of switch it up a little bit and I like to make things that actually have a little bit of purpose. I do a lot of custom artwork um, and I, I think this, it, the, the thought of a book plate would be such a fun thing to make for a gift for someone else. Think about it. If you did, learned how to design a book plate today during our Sunday sketch, just imagine if you were invited to someone's house to stay for a portion of time, wouldn't it be fantastic to make something like a book plate, give it to them as a thank you gift for your time there? Wouldn't that be fantastic? It's a celebration of friendship by giving this gift. You can also make a bookmark, you can do so many things. So, um, so let's get started. I do want to show you some examples of things, um, the types of designs, uh, different designs that book plates have been in the past, but honestly, it's your creation. You can do anything you want. And then finally, you know, the, the process of the design, the execution, and then the reproduction. So actually you can take this book plate drawing that you've done and you've given as a gift, or you can do something like you can actually uh, create a scan of the artwork that you've done and it can be reproduced onto coffee cups. It can be re re reproduced onto bookmarks. It can be reproduced onto um, note cards. Uh, any, any number of things. So you can actually even, honestly, you know, in the days they used to make etching things and, and print it, but you can actually print it from your computer onto uh, stickers, and then you can actually use them as book plates. I, I'm, I'm one of those people that hates to underline or highlight or bend the page and much less stick a sticky in it. So I'm, I'm a little bit of a, a purist in that sense. So uh, before I get started, I want to show you, and you might be curious, what does coffee look like when you paint with it? Well, I have a couple examples. I bet you didn't know. Now, most of these don't come plain, but I kind of uh, teach a class where we actually paint on coffee cups with coffee. And this is what it looks like painted on. So this is coffee. Um, now the black lines are done with a felt tip marker, but this is actually a, a fun way to paint with coffee. Everything that's brown is coffee. So this is just more coffee and this is less coffee. So it's almost like a watercolor. Isn't that fun? Painting on coffee cups. The other fun thing is you can take, um, expired books. And is there such a thing? Yeah, there's a, such a thing. So uh, my, the library that I live close to will actually have a bin of library books that are expired, so to speak. And so I've taken some of those pages and I have um, used coffee and I've painted uh, landscape. So I actually use them as um, sketchbook pages and I've kind of gone and painted several scenes. Now where the, um, I've, I've, I've obviously used some ink with this. And in this case, I've also used some white. And it's super fun. So that's what coffee looks like when you paint with it. Now let's get into, cause I know you were curious. So that's why I, kind of went into that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch cameras and we're going to kind of go into another part of our demonstration. And so this is um, one of the book plates and 
uh, in design form. So this is, it's, it's something that's been done on like tissue paper. Okay, so that's where the design work is done. And this was done for the National Sporting um, Library. This was obviously done very long ago. And um, you can see you've got your, you've got your lettering, which is, uh, you know, whole part of the process. You've got a single figure here with, with drawing sketches. I believe this was a proposed one that was never used. Now, when you do a design on the tracing paper, the thing that is um, important is when you're making a book plate, you know, before there were printers, um, there would be printing done with etching plates. This is a photograph of an actual plate. It's not very clear, but these dark lines are actually um, areas for the ink to settle into and be rubbed into. And then this is pressed in a printing press and then it transfers onto paper for a finished result. So everything that's here is in reverse of what it would be um, printed. And that is a great process that we don't have to learn today. <laughs> Now, the other thing to keep in mind is there's, there's different stages of um, the whole um, book plate process. So this is a sketch that was done. You can see the eraser marks, trying to get the lettering just right. And that's why you do things on tracing paper because that is where you can actually make, you can make the mistakes and then you can transfer this design onto another, designed for sketching purposes. Now here is the finished book plate from that sketch, but yet it is still maintaining some of the sketching lines. Do you see how wonderful the, the, the uh, drawing work is on that? It's not very mechanical looking. It's still looking very sketchy. We have a wonderful um, advantage in that we don't have to worry necessarily about um, having our drawing transfer onto a plate that then is used for printing processes. So we're gonna have a lot more fun with this process. Here is another example of, of a sketched version of a book plate. And again, the design is different. You know, They've tried to incorporate everything about the owner of the library's interest into one single book plate. And this is a method of doing it where it doesn't look like a hodgepodge or a mess. So this is interesting to keep in mind where, um, you know, it's, it is a technique um, of design. And when you're doing a book plate, you're trying to get everything in a small area of surface, tell a whole story visually. And this is what that book plate looked in final version. Um, it's very, very busy not my preference, but um, I don't know, yes, but still it is, um, it's an example. Now here's another example of the different type of layout of a book plate. So in this case, this book plate is more of an icon or a center um, layout, maybe what will be considered a portrait composition. So this is taking um, different, elements of, um, I guess, tack for, um, for this book plate and creating a, almost like a shield with it in a very symmetrical design. And this is in fact of a shield, maybe a family crest of sorts, and it's got the person's name, but it's, it's still very customized, but very classical and this is a very blurry photograph, but still, again, it is the almost a portrait, so it's in the the middle. And this is this is actually the same type of composition, but it's just done with nature, a scene, a vignette of you know fishing and the perfect spot. Then we have another vignette 
of um, horses. And in this case, this is where the person's name would be. Oops, you can't really see that. Let me do that. This is where the person's name would be for the book plate. Most of the information is given above. It's very attractive. And this is where it kind of gets into, you know, more of a formal, um, a formal, you know, border around a, a drawing of a scene and then the name, another example, but in this case, this is a formal border, but the border itself is actually the art. So we've got the scene of, you know, a sound for duck hunting. We've got the fishing, we've got all these water sport um, things, but it's basically the frame itself is almost like a frame of a window. Same thing with here. This is almost like the frame of a window where they've decorated, they've created a wonderful view that almost looks like you've opened the page and you've escaped into this wonderful scenery. And this would be something, I would say the closest to Tucker Smith's um, sort of composition and layout um, with the grand, beautiful work that he is painting. And in this case, this is kind of interesting. This looks like the signature um, that has been incorporated into the person's book plate. So there's no question. And again, this is another frame idea, okay? Um, but it's just more of a scene. So this would be more of a, like a Trump loy effect where it looks like you're in the room and you're looking out into most likely the owner's pets and their favorite hunting gear. And this, this is definitely a version of something that you can do. Um, you know, the single horse, this is probably somebody's specific well-loved horse, um, their sport, the name, their beloved pooch. All right, this one makes me giggle. So this is <laughs> a rocking horse. So it's a very tongue in cheek sort of, it's even got a, a little um, character down here. I imagine that's a fox saying something sassy to, to the man on the toy horse. And the toy horse is actually made of a book. So there's a book, very clever. And then this is um, lettering that has, he's just busting through it with his fast rocking horse. Um, so the hobby rider um, being the book plate of A. Edward Newton. But this just cracks me up, very funny, as if book plates could do such things. So this is another book plate and the last I will show you. But um, just to kind of give you a sense of another sort of clever way of doing lettering, um, clever way of doing lettering, um, and it's tied in several elements. And this is, uh, this was, these are, I don't know if you can see this shadowing down on the left here. Uh, that is the embossing from the actual book plate that was made from the etching. So very clever, very fun ideas. So back to our um, thoughts and ideas. So we're gonna make a book plate, but I tell you what, we only have an hour. So I'm not gonna be drawing hounds and horses and all sorts of things, but keeping in mind that one, I wanna make the gift and two, I want to um, teach you the process. We, we are going to use these wonderful images as our Images today, um, these fun fellows cannot keep their nose out of the book. So in the celebration of good friends and good reading, we are gonna go ahead and start the process of our bookmaking uh, using some of these images. Now, this is the thing, you can um, create your design any number of ways. These are images that I got from the internet and then I made a printout of them. 
you can do the very same thing. You can do something that um, <clears throat> you can even go on and, and make something that's all perfectly laid out um, on your, on your uh, computer and print it out and then trace the items. Um, another thing you can do is you can, um, okay, that, I'll just stop there because you can, you can do a whole lot of different, there's a million different ways of going about this. But today, for today, we are gonna just basically uh, create a book plate using the example that we have of the um, dog and the snout. So I'm gonna make this sort of, um, I'm actually gonna let the design sort of come to me. So I've got my tracing paper and with the tracing paper, I'm going to decide which one I wanna use. So if I had you here, I would ask, but I think I like this nose almost the best. It looks the most Although this has, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna select this one. This one looks like it's just really pushy and really wants to read. So I'm definitely going to go with that one. I will take this wonderful artwork out. Okay, so we've got our little nose. And what we're gonna do is um, we can trace. I'm not a huge fan of tracing at all times, so what I'll do is I'll just basically get the idea of this cute little nose. And the reason why I'm showing you how to do it this way is because I want you to basically not let anything stop you from creating. Okay, so we have a nose. Now, one thing that makes this kind of fun is the fact that it's in a barn, sort of a barn or a fence. It's in the knot hole of a fence. So I'm gonna complete the fence. Okay. So now the job that is up to me is to create something that is of interest in the whole surface area that we're working with. Um, I think this nose is pretty cute, but I also think that the, the portion of the, the wood is also equally important because it accents the nose. So I'm gonna draw these things. Now, the reason why I'm lightly sketching is because this is just the design part. This is not something that is to, um, you know, be your, your perfect illustration. I'm just trying to basically show. Okay, so I have an idea that you know, this is maybe for a friend, maybe that's their dog. And I basically want to say, you know, with your nose always in a book, maybe that. So I think what I'll do is do the sketch of perhaps something semi-casual. This is maybe for a good friend that has invited me to their lake house or something fun. And I am creating a wonderful thank you gift. So this is kind of a funny thing. And then let's say, hmm, oh, there you go, maybe a book. So this is all sketching. 
book. Nose in a book. And so drawing can be, you know, very sketchy. At first, you're doing a basic design, and honestly, it's not uh, always going to be a perfect illustration, especially on the tracing paper. Now, from the tracing paper, I'm going to transfer it onto this. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can transfer. You can use transfer paper, which has a, um, a sort of ink uh, used. But again, I am going to show you how to do things where you don't have to have a lot of supplies or specific things. Because my rule is never let the, what you don't have get in the way of making something. So what I've done is I've turned this over and I don't even know if this is gonna work. Oh, well, I'll be, it certainly did. So I'm gonna take my little container here and I'm going to uh, make a light transfer onto this drawing with the ink, with rather the um, pencil. Now remember if you do something like this and you've got lettering, your lettering is gonna come in backwards. So you really don't wanna give yourself a too terrible time. Okay, now look at that. Again, it's a very light, rough drawing. I can go back and I can begin to uh, lay out some of these details with more skill using my tools that I have, my pencil, but I also want to introduce you to another tool that I have that's actually, so this is something that I can erase, which is important. You don't want to get into making too many erasing marks onto your little sketch here of your bookmark. And again, I'm really abbreviating this whole process so that we, we can just sort of see how all of this can work work and flow. And I'm making a little gift idea for a friend who has invited me. Now, straight lines are nice. Um, and again, you can use anything to make a straight line. You can use another piece of paper to make straight lines. So I do want to I think face, uh, fence, face, make a nice border. It would be nice if it were straight though. Again, this is pencil. So. I'm using this other card. Okay. Now this is a book plate that could actually be used as a card. You know, they could, they could replicate it and make it into a card. They can replicate it and make it into a, a cup. Um, or they could even use some sort of version of it and replicate it and make it into a, a um, some, for, some form of uh, bookmark or even a logo for their beach house or their lake house or their garden. Okay, giving it as much character as possible, keeping my 
my drawing loose because this is only pencil that I'm using right now. I haven't even gotten into the, the uh, adding of anything. So this, this is wood. I definitely want this to have the characteristics of wood. Um, and these two elements are holding the wood together. So the wood is almost like a background element. Uh, we've got this crack forming here. but it's almost the wood creates a radiating sort of pattern around that nose. It almost looks like a fox head, but it's a nose. So the other element I want to use, this is a, a pen that is really good for um, illustrating fine lines. And it's something that you can use watercolor over top of, you can use inks over top of, and it won't move. So when you get your pencil portion, for the most part, um, organized, you can then use this to um, create lines, either before or after the painting. And to be honest with you, I think what I'm gonna do before I start this using of this pen, um, I tell you what, I'm going to, use this only in the border okay so i'm actually getting kind of excited about um, being able to make some of these kind of things for people. So I want to get into the um, painting portion of it. Now this is uh, obviously not paint. This is coffee, ground coffee, not ground coffee. I'm sorry, instant coffee. So when you add water to it, um, it's actually something that you can drink. <clears throat> yes. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to it, not a lot. The thing is, is that you don't want it to make, make it too watery. You really kind of want to have this a consistency of almost syrup. Okay, so I'm, I'm using this. Um, you can almost smell this, right? This coffee, okay. I envision, um, you know, on these horse by horse back only treks that Tucker Smith would make into the wild that, you know, maybe instant coffee would be in one of those bags on the horse's back. And so, you know, this is not um, archival, uh, <laughs> but it's also okay to use. And it's almost like watercolor. So actually, you know what? I'm not going to add more water to it because what you don't want to do is get too much water going um, with it. So I've got my fine brush and I've also got some other brushes that are good for um, laying out washes. I want to show you a bunch of different techniques. Um, so I've got a fine brush and then you know, I've got a, a bigger brush. These are not, you know, amazing, uh, you know, super fine brushes that I'm using here. These are basically low grade uh, brushes, but I wanted to show you all the wonderful things you can do with simply coffee. So what I'm doing before, so this is just pencil marks. So um, in theory, I can actually paint these areas with my coffee, use it just like watercolor. So the, this is painting it on directly. And you see it can get quite dark and obviously you can make it lighter. 
by you know using more water. Okay. Now I so this is that's painted on directly. I almost want to show you how you can use it more like a watercolor. So I'm actually going to now this is a mixed medium uh, paper that I'm using. It is not a paper that is intensely uh, ready for you know big dramatic watercolor effects. But I'm going to do my best to show you how it kind of. Could you use watercolor paper, Mary? I can. In fact, I do have another piece. I can do a little tiny demonstration. Oh, sorry. I meant could as in in general. Would you recommend mixed media paper or would you make a recommend watercolor paper if you had a preference? Um, well, that's a great question. I tend to grab stuff that I can do a variety of things with. And, um, you know, the illustration without the lumps and bumps of potentially a watercolor paper is, you know, an idea. Um, so, you know, and it almost, in some cases, this is a particular mixed medium uh, watercolor paper that is so versatile, you can actually put it even into a printer. So I can actually do uh, let's say a bunch of images and I can practice, um, you know, using the coffee. Um, I'll show you. So this is just basically I'm trying to get the wood um, and give it some of that, you know, bleeding effect with the watercolor paper using that. Let me show you with actual watercolor paper. There we go. So this is watercolor paper. And again, I've, I even use the textbook, um, not textbook, I use the, uh, the printed book paper for the coffee demonstration. So watercolor is kind of funny. Watercolor, you know, you can do so many different things. It's just a water soluble, but some of the, some of the, um, uh, attributes of watercolor paper is its ability to handle doing, you know, watercolor effect things like that, you know, where you can actually get the bleeding, you know, these could be tumbleweeds. And the more, the more um, actual coffee that you add to the surface, obviously the darker it will get. And then I can also paint on it directly. So let's see, kind of getting a Southwest inspired thing going on here. So you see the difference between these two areas. This is wet and this is not, this is a direct application of the coffee. Very different. Wow, this is a terrible looking cactus. Or I can do some beautiful hills off in the distance.
So really the watercolor paper does have it, its advantages, but I would say that, you know, multi-purpose paper, you know, especially if you're just, just trying to get some general effects and, and get the drawing on, um, you know, is definitely almost better suited. Um, I like keeping all sorts of papers with me though. I really definitely want to be prepared for so much. Clearly, I'm not a Western girl. I need to go out West more because this is in need of some help here. My little Western. It all started being Western with these tumbleweeds. So. But this is all just monochromatic. Um, and it's a type of thing that I can actually go back and I can do more and more with over, the t over time. I can also use the, I will show you in this case, um, this is That is the, the pen. And what I want to show you is that the coffee does not impact the pen at all. So it really makes a lovely sort of additional element to this process. Okay, so there's watercolor. Let's go back to our friend. Our friend. Mr. Nose in the book. Okay, I will have to say that the watercolor paper is definitely, thank you Valerie for bringing that up. Um, the watercolor paper is um, absolutely a win-win with the, um, with because this right here, the way it handled here is, is really something that, you know, it's kind of breaking down a little bit under the uh, sort of influence of the water. Um, but I can still go back and I can fix that area up. But I think you would get a lot more depth with the actual use of watercolor paper. So that's a good call. Okay. Now, um, so I am continuing to add depth to this with the coffee. It's something that you just add in layers. And honestly, if you're a tea drinker, this is probably not the medium for you because it really does smell like coffee. Surprise. Okay, let's get into this guy's face. Just a reminder of what I'm working with here. This guy's nose right here. That cute little face. So we start with our darks. And I don't wanna to rely too much on the illustration. Um, I wanna get my values here using the coffee. I like how it's a little off center. Get his mouth in there. This gets pretty dark. And you can even add little details. These are also something that I can add with the pen and ink later um, because I can draw on top of the coffee once it's dry. 
Um, it will just pretty much be a mess if you try and do it beforehand. So the coffee is something that, you know, requires, you know, um, I don't know, a little bit of patience. It's, it's, it's fun. It's exciting. It's different. Obviously, if you were at a coffee date with your friend and you, you brought a blank, um, fun cup to play with and you guys could both create and sip your perfectly brewed cup with your imperfect uh, paint, that would be such an ideal little gathering to consider in the future. So these darks, it only gets but so dark with the coffee. And you can add maybe more grounds to, and you can have different variations of, of the actual um, paint or the coffee uh, if you choose, but really just adding, you know, it's about the amount and letting it sit there a little bit almost like you would with a watercolor. And creating something that's of interest. And again, I wanna go back into this area with the wood. Creating detail and levels of interest with the coffee through doing lines almost similar to the lines that I drew in my little tracing paper. And, and typically you would spend more time uh, doing work with the tracing paper before you jump into something, uh, you know, ready to paint. But honestly, you know, I think playing and not having it perfectly perfect is part of the artistic process. So I do believe that more play is in need. The thing with watercolor too, and much the coffee is, you know, you kind of have to work kind of fast. It's not something that you are able to just labor over. Um, it does require a little bit of patience. Like you'll notice I, I jump over and around different parts of this. Um, and that's because certain areas are not dry enough for me to even uh, really work into or with. And so I can get the depth that I'm looking for. And, you know, it's about adding layers. And when you're doing something custom, like a book plate would have been done, adding little details, like maybe the owner's name or a book that the dog would have been interested in on these two areas. Every surface is up and has great potential for information. Okay, and that is, you know, pretty exciting. So I will say, like cleaning out a closet, it's going to look messier before it looks better. And that is just the process of art. And you're going to lose interest because it doesn't look amazing while you're, while you're in the process. But sticking with it is actually part of the process. So sticking with it, doing all these little extra layers of lines, um, you know, add interest and depth. Every time I go back and I add another layer of this coffee, I'm adding interest, something that wasn't there before, levels, layers, and it definitely is, you know, shaping up into something. I really love that analogy, Mary. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I avoid closets. I'd much rather do art. Um, it's too much, too much for my, too much for my spirit to clean out closets, but that is the truth and, and really sticking with it and having the patience to stick with it and, you know, trusting in your own abilities. And to be honest with you, you know, you, you are not the person 
professionally hired to, you know, make this amazing piece of artwork. You're discovering, you're learning, you are experimenting, and it should be enjoyable, honestly, and, and you should be learning from it. And uh, sometimes that can be not so attractive a process, but it's very important. So now this is also something that is just in the coffee. I have not even begun to add, you know, the depth of, um, the depth of the black lines that I could add. And to be honest with you, you can, you can do any number of things. You can, you can mix paint with the watercolor. I'm sorry. You can mix paint. You can, you know, mix mediums. Like if I wanted to do color with there, I could use ink and everything, but the point of this is to be just kind of silly and fun. And that's why the coffee cups are so fun because you're actually, the coffee cups are an interesting thing to work with because it's a shape. So it's not a flat surface. And so it would be very fun. What if, just what if you went to your local coffee shop with a pre-made cup with your name on it and so when they said oh may I have your name you just hand them the cup and then everybody just loses their mind and the whole place carries you on their shoulders out and you've had a great day not just a regular cup of coffee but a great day okay obviously you know I don't get out enough because that would never happen but you know you never know okay So this cute little guy, I don't want to really, so this is, this area is still very wet. So I really don't want to go in with this uh, and add layers to it yet because it would just sort of mush. And I really don't want that. So I'm going to continue to work on this area a little bit. Okay. And let's see, what should we put in this area? Um, we can put the person's name. Uh, we can put, um, aha, I think I know. I just had a friend, unfortunately, whose dog recently passed away. And because I'm always thinking of gifts, I could actually give this to them uh, when I'm done. So it's just a fun little thing to give. So their dog's name, and actually, funny enough, the, uh, the dog's parent is an author. So I think this would be very cute. So Finn. Now here's another thing that I'm gonna sort of uh, talk to you about, uh, and you can barely see this, but this is, uh, your choice of lettering is kind of important. Um, you can use any type of, this is block lettering. So I think what I'll do is I'll add a little flare to it. Nothing like a serif to make a flare. Oh. I don't know about you, but this is so fun. I tell you what, when you can do art and you can be thinking about friends or wildlife or animals or pets or places you've been to and you've visited, that is a good day. So I've written out Finn. And that's a good way for me to wait for it to dry and all those sorts of things. Now, let's see, I think some of these areas have actually dried and I can then begin, as you saw, I could use the, um, the black ink. Now, um, in this case, um, you know, this area is still wet, so I really can't use too much, but I can get a lot of wonderful depth by adding focus to this area with different drawing techniques. 
So for example, I will just use this because this is dry. So I can actually here, I can do it on this too. Oh, see, a wet marker or a marker on a wet surface is not a good look. Okay, so I can actually do some additional drawing on this portion. You can make areas darker. You can you can do added little techniques. To the thing. So this, the moral of this particular story is that coffee does not dry fast enough for me. Um, but I'll tell you what, this little bit, so I can go here and I can use okay. So I've gotten the nose and this would definitely benefit from some drawing. If I could go in and I could go in and, and do the details of some of these areas that, that need shading, but this particular pen does not do well with um, ink. So let me show you um, another idea. And this is from last, last time's um, uh, class I did. So this is, uh, when I say a bookmark, this is actually a bookmark. And you can imagine perhaps a very tiny, wonderful miniature suite uh, book plate on top of this bookmark. This is a bookmark that is done with folded paper and these are two magnets. So this is a way of using a book plate on an actual book without having to uh, take uh, adhesive and apply it to the book. I'm just definitely wary of that kind of thing. So there's how that works. And I do wanna show you, this is the uh, watercolor blob that I have created with the um, watercolor paper. Uh, and it should have dry, dried a little bit so that I can actually go in and add more layer, layers and levels of detail. And it's still kind of wet. Yeah, it's still kind of wet. So the moral of the story is that, uh, yeah, book plates are fun. Um, and you can do them in any sort of little variety of ways.